Russell Wilson has had a rough year on the field in 2022. He's been mocked by fans, media, and even other players. He's played a huge role in the Broncos' failure of a season, and yesterday, after a disastrous performance by Denver, Russ had to finish the game on the bench. Wilson was once a Super Bowl champion, a top quarterback in the NFL, and a player that was very well respected throughout the league. So how did he go from that to this? We're going to break all of it down in this video, but before I get into it, welcome to The War Room, a channel where I discuss all things sports related. Subscribe to the channel if you're new, and let's get straight to it. In the third round of the 2012 NFL Draft, the Seattle Seahawks drafted quarterback Russell Wilson with the 75th pick. Wilson was the sixth quarterback taken in this draft, behind Andrew Luck, Robert Griffin III, Ryan Tannehill, Brandon Whedon, and Brock Osweiler. I've seen people do redrafts of this class, and some rank Wilson as the number one QB, while others rank Luck as number one. Regardless of who you think the better pick was, there's no arguing that landing Russell Wilson in the third round was an absolute steal for Seattle. Russ's first year in the league was a good one, going 11-5, throwing 26 touchdowns to 10 interceptions, with a 64.1 completion percentage. These stats were good enough to land him in the Pro Bowl and finish third in Offensive Rookie of the Year voting behind RG3 and Luck. He also led Seattle to the divisional round in the playoffs. This rookie season was just a small glimpse of what was to come, because over the next few years, Russell Wilson solidified himself as one of the top quarterbacks in the entire NFL. In 2013, Seattle went 13-3 in the regular season, as Russ actually had pretty similar stats to his rookie year. The same amount of touchdowns with one less interception, his completion percentage was 1% lower, and he threw for roughly 250 more yards. Seattle also won their first Super Bowl in franchise history. You can't mention any of Seattle's 2013 success without talking about their defense, known as the Legion of Boom, which is arguably the greatest defense assembled in NFL history. You also have to mention Marshawn Lynch in the running back position, who was in his prime and played a huge role in Seattle's winning as well. So while it wasn't like Russell Wilson was carrying this team and he deserved all the credit, he still played his role to perfection. He's a second-year quarterback who already has a Super Bowl win, and he's a star in the making. In 2014, after another regular season with no eye-popping numbers, Seattle managed to make their second Super Bowl appearance in as many years, this time versus the New England Patriots. Any football fan knows how this game ends. Head coach Pete Carroll made the most infamous play call in football history. Wilson threw an interception on the goal line to lose the game instead of running the ball with Marshawn, and Seattle was heartbroken. Unfortunately for Russ and Seattle, this was the closest they got to another Super Bowl win because they haven't made it past the divisional round since this game. But after the season, Russell Wilson took his game to a new level. On the screen now are his stats from 2015 to 2020, and these years can officially be referred to as Russ's prime. He made the Pro Bowl every one of these seasons besides 2016, and he led Seattle to the playoffs every season besides 2017. During this time period was when Russ's name belonged in the conversation with guys like Aaron Rodgers or Tom Brady. He was playing football at an elite level that was incredibly fun to watch, especially for a third round pick who was never expected to be this good. But near the end of the 2020 season is when things took a turn, and this is where we might be able to pinpoint the downfall of Russ. Reports said that during the 2020 season, he met with the front office during week 11 about frustrations regarding the offensive line, but they dismissed him and he stormed out. Even though Seattle finished the year 12 and 4, they still lost in the wildcard round, and this is where the rumors of Russ wanting out of Seattle really started to pick up. He made an appearance on the Dan Patrick Show in February 2021, where he was asked if he had any input in the decisions the front office made while building the team. Russ responded by saying that it would help to be involved more in their decisions, especially since he's a veteran quarterback. Patrick also mentioned that at this point in Russ's career, he had been sacked 394 times, the most for any player in their first nine seasons in NFL history, in which Russ responded by saying if the team wants to win, they probably needed to get better up front. He had a point, because every single season of his career, he was top five in time sacked. The only season he wasn't in the top five was his rookie season when he was number six. So in Russ's defense, he was right. As time went on, there was more of a mutual agreement that it might be best for both parties to separate. Russ felt the front office wasn't doing their best job to protect him, and he felt he should have had more of a say in what goes on with their team. After the 2021 season, where the team went 6-8 in the 14 games Wilson played, it became clear that the best days of Russ and Seattle's relationship were behind them. So in March of 2022, a trade was agreed upon with the Denver Broncos. Seattle would get tight end Noah Fant, defensive end Shelby Harris, quarterback Drew Locke, and five draft picks, including two first-rounders and two second-rounders from Denver, 
while the Broncos got Russell Wilson and a fourth rounder. It's no secret that Denver had very high expectations of their new quarterback because they gave up quite the haul for him. When they traded for Wilson, he had two years remaining on his contract. Until September of 2022, before he even played a game for his new team, the Broncos announced they were signing him to a five-year, $245 million contract extension with $165 million guaranteed. So he is now under contract for a total of seven years were $296 million in total. Denver believes they landed their franchise quarterback, and the betters in Vegas believed it too. Before the season, the Broncos were tied for the seventh best odds at winning this year's Super Bowl, while their over-under for wins in the regular season was set at 9.5. While these seemed like kind of fair projections at the time, we now look at these numbers and laugh, because to put it lightly, the 2022 season for Russell Wilson and the Denver Broncos has been an absolute nightmare. Right now, the Broncos are 4-11. Wilson is having by far the worst season of his career, and the trade with Seattle, as well as his seven-year, $296 million contract, both might go down as the worst of all time. Before this season, Wilson's lowest rating was 2016 in Seattle, when it was a 92.6. This season in Denver, it's an 82.6. Russ also has the lowest completion percentage of his career, at 60.1%. And as of right now, with only two games left in the season, Wilson has only thrown 12 touchdown passes. The least amount he's thrown in the season prior to this year was 2014, when he threw 20. So it's looking like a career low in completion percentage, passing touchdowns, rating, and wins in his first season after receiving a massive contract. But the embarrassment doesn't end there. In fact, those stats were just the beginning. Right now, the Broncos' offense puts up a league-worst 15.5 points per game. But perhaps the saddest part for Broncos fans is prior to week 16, their defense was third in the league in opponents points per game. So just for fun, let's say the Broncos offense wasn't the worst, and let's say in every single game this season, they scored exactly 18 points. This would still be really bad, as it would only rank their offense 28th in points per game instead of 32nd. However, the team's record, if they just put up 18 a game, would be 9 and 6. If the Denver offense put up the NFL average of 22 points per game in every game this season, they would be 10-4-1. So literally the only way for this Broncos team to miss the playoffs this season was if Russ's offense was not only below average, but historically bad. A below average offense still would have had them in a very good position to make the playoffs because of their defense being so good. And unfortunately for Russ, again, that's not the end of it. Yesterday on Christmas Day, the Broncos faced the 4-10 Rams, a game that everyone probably thought was going to be really good before the season since these were supposed to be two of the best teams in the league. Obviously, that wasn't the case, but maybe, since they both suck this year, the actual game itself had a shot at being pretty close even though it meant literally nothing. That's not what happened. The Rams put up 51 points on the Broncos' defense and allowed just 14 points in the blowout. Russ threw one touchdown to three interceptions and got benched before the game ended. First-year head coach Nathaniel Hackett got fired today after this pathetic performance, making him the fifth coach in NFL history to get fired before completing his first season. This Broncos team that had all these expectations heading into the season have spiraled into one of the league's worst teams that seems to be hitting new lows every single week. And still, Russ's misery doesn't end there. There have been multiple moments on the field this season where his teammates were visibly frustrated with him. He's not only been mocked by fans all over social media, but it's not uncommon to see other players in the NFL mock him as well. For Russ's bank account, 2022 has been incredible, and maybe that's all he cares about. But as for his legacy on the field, this year could not possibly be worse. From a massive contract with your new team to being benched in your first season with them. There are still six years left on his deal, so maybe this offseason the Broncos front office is able to put better pieces around him and actually have a somewhat competent offense next season. To many people, the quote-unquote fall of Russ hasn't happened yet and it's too early to tell. But one thing is for certain, Russell Wilson is a player that has been through it all. He's seen the highest of highs and the lowest of lows in terms of his team's success and his individual stats as a player. Russell Wilson is a man that has dealt with lots of scrutiny in 2022. He's been called many names like corny or trash, but the unfortunate truth for him is despite his golden years in Seattle, if he can't put together some great years in Denver with the six years he has left, many people will consider him the most fraudulent player in NFL history. So that wraps this one up. Thank you guys for watching. Like the video if you enjoyed and subscribe to the channel if you're new. And as always, I'll see you guys in the next one.